G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy as we continue this series doing individual videos on 2024 draft prospects. Today we are doing Job Shanahan, who is the 20th player I believe I've done in this series. But if you want to see the other players in this playlist, click in the top right corner and you can find all the videos I've done on individual draft prospects. So let's talk about Job Shanahan, who has a lot going for him. He's a 195 centimeter key forward, although generally speaking, he can play back. He's played a little bit as a defensive midfielder too. In his bottom age year, he actually also played as an undersized ruck, but it with his vertical leap, he actually held his own pretty well. But I think primarily clubs are going to be drafting him as a key forward prospect. So where does he rank amongst the key forwards in this year's draft? Well, we just did a video on Harry Armstrong. And I'd say when you look at the consensus rankings, Shanahan's probably a close second behind Harry Armstrong at this point in time. But it is distinctly possible he does go earlier than Armstrong. We'll get into that later. What is different about Job versus the other tall prospects in this draft? He's actually got some VFL exposure. And not only that, he dominated. So he played for Essendon's VFL. NFL side three times this year and kicked 11 goals, which is just absolutely unreal. On top of that, kicked 23 goals, 12 for Bendigo in the Coates Talent League and was named in their team of the year. But in his three appearances at VFL level against grown men, he kicked four goals straight in the first game, two goals, three in the second game against Gold Coast, and then kicked five goals straight against Coburg. So as a key forward, his A game really is leading and marking and using his leap to mark at the highest point. He's not so much one of those guerrilla key forwards that wrestles in the goal square and takes a pack mark. Played for the Allies in the National Carnival. He won all Australian honours at centre half forward. And he actually led the competition for eight contested marks. So when I said he didn't take pack marks, I, what I should have said is that it's probably not going to be in a wrestling situation, but he absolutely does have the ability to leap high and take a mark over others. He's very well performed at multiple levels. Like I said, he just dominated the VFL level and then finished the year in the final game for the Bendigo Pioneers with six goals and 17 possessions. He's got a great aerial presence, times his leaps really well, marks strong strongly in the air and has really good mobility and is a good athlete too. He's a good kick of the footy, whether it be in a set shot scenario or just generally his field kicking. He gets around the ground really effectively and we'll talk about his numbers in a second. But he's just consistently there, consistently in the right spots. And his decision making on top of that is really good. As for his testing, his agility test was 8.77 seconds. His 20 meter sprint was 3.1 seconds, which isn't rapid, but it's pretty good for a big man. And his time trial was six minutes 39. So these are all really solid numbers for a guy who's 195 centimeters. So to cover off his strengths and weaknesses, we talked about that aerial ability, like I said, just consistently able to get in the right spot to take a mark and times those marks really well. With clean hands, both you know in a marking situation, but generally speaking, he's very clean with the footy. His mobility makes him a very tough matchup. Not only is he really strong in the air, but you've got to stay with him as well and he pushes high up the ground. I don't think anyone can dispute his scoreboard impact, the, the ability to consistently find the goals, even in games where he's getting low possession counts. We said that about Harry Armstrong. It's also true for Shane. Hand. And also that versatility, the fact that he can play down back. And I've read uh, Toomey said there is even a belief among some clubs that he might even be a key back at the next level. As for midfield potential, I'm not too sure about that. He certainly has the endurance base of a player that can play higher up the ground. Um, I'm not too sure what his stoppage craft is like. That's not something we've really seen at under 18's level. I think this guy projects as a true key position prospect. Now let's discuss some of the perceived weaknesses around Shanahan's game. One of them is defensive intent. So sometimes when the ball hits the deck and he's flown for the mark, his follow-up work can be a little bit lacking. Likewise, at ground level, you know, a lot, a lot of his best work is done when the ball's in the air. His ground level work can probably use some improvement which sort of speaks against his ability as a midfielder but what works in his favor is that he was previously undersized and he's hit that 195 mark where at 195 you are key position height and so that's no longer a real concern so let's talk about his draft range i think it's still possible that he's the first key position forward to take in this year's draft, although it's not currently the expectation. Cal Toomey has a good feel for which clubs are interested in which players, and he says that Richmond, Port Adelaide, GWS, and West Coast, and Sydney are all viewed as the most favoured clubs to snaffle Shanahan in the first round. This is probably consistent with my view, where I, in previous mock drafts, I, I had him as Richmond's fourth selection, which should be about pick 14 on the actual night. That's probably the earliest I'd imagine someone like a Shanahan goes at this current point in time, but it is hard to see him getting out of the teens entirely, especially when Port Adelaide, GWS, who have two selections in that range, West Coast and Sydney would need to take him in those teens. He's also been the subject of some speculation around clubs like Essendon trying to trade back into the first round of this year's draft to get him. So it's very hard to pick which club he'll go to. He's sort of Victorian, sort of from New South Wales. He represented the Allies in the Carnival this year, he played for Bendigo in the Coates Talent League. So being country boy, that's probably another one of the temptations for these interstate clubs to take him with one of their selections. I think he presents as a really strong prospect. I have a feeling this 
guy is going to be good at AFL level, not least because of his ability to step up to the VFL as a tall player and hit the scoreboard regularly. But let me know in the comments what you think of him, guys. Would you be happy for your club to draft him with one of their selections? Let me know what you think in the comments and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.